The Electoral Court recently issued a ruling regarding former President Jacob Zuma's eligibility to run for public office despite his recent conviction and subsequent imprisonment. This decision has sparked a considerable debate and raised important questions about the intersection of legal process and democratic participation in South Africa. At the heart of the matter is the interpretation of Section 471E of the Constitution, which outlines the eligibility criteria for individuals seeking to serve as member of the National Assembly. According to this provision, a person convicted of an offense and sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment without the option of a fine is disqualified from holding office. However, crucially, this disqualification is not immediate and remains subject to the outcome of any appeal process. In the case of Jacob Zuma, the Electoral Court determined that he remained eligible to stand as a candidate despite his conviction and sentencing by the Constitutional Court. The court reasoned that Zuma's inability to appeal the Constitutional Court judgment means that his disqualification did not come into effect until all appeal process has been exhausted. Until then, Zuma retained his eligibility to contest election and hold public office. It emphasized that a conviction and a sentence do not become effective until all avenues of appeal have been expelled or until the convicted individual chooses not to appeal. In Zuma's case, the sentence imposed by the Constitutional Court could not be considered final as he had not yet had the opportunity to appeal it. Despite facing legal challenges and being incarcerated at the Escort Correctional Center in KwaZulu Natal, Zuma has continued to campaign for his party, the Umkonto Sizwe. The Electoral Court's ruling provided him with the legal basis to remain active on a political and a seek elected office. However, the ruling has also prompted criticism and concerns about the integrity of the electoral process. Some have argued that allowing a convicted individual to run for office undermines the principle of accountability and ethical leadership. There are facts that it set a dangerous precedent and sends the wrong message about the consequences of criminal conduct among public officials. The decision is likely to be scrutinized in the coming weeks, particularly as the Constitutional Court prepared to hear the appeal lodged by the Electoral Commission of South Africa regarding Zuma's inclusion on the MK Party's list of candidates. The outcome of this appeal could have far-reaching implications for the future electoral law and democratic governance in South Africa.